الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد. So the topic in hand is uh, <coughs> rights of brotherhood and companionship. Um, in reality, this topic, if a person analyzes upon it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, He teaches us <coughs> in Surah Al-Hajarat, one of a very, very important lesson and a very important verse in regards to which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith as well that a person can do many actions, a person can do many a'mal <clears throat> but that individual may ruin those actions as well so a person can pray his salah, a person can recite his Qur'an, a person can you know do all of these acts of good and righteousness but there comes a time when a person ruins these actions as well by himself Meaning that that person does not receive any sort of reward, that person doesn't receive any good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. And the Prophet ﷺ has identified that individual as a person who is bankrupt. Right? So in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Atadruna mal muflis. The Prophet ﷺ asks his companions, Do you know who a bankrupt person is? So the Sahaba said, Ya Nabi Allah, al muflis ufina man la dirhama lahu wa la mata'a. Ya Nabi Allah, muflis, a bankrupt individual according to us is a person who doesn't have any money you know a person who doesn't have a house a person who doesn't have a ride a car Ya Nabi Allah that's a muflis according to us but the Prophet ﷺ said no that's not a muflis a muflis is an individual who would come on the day of Qiyamah with mountains of good deeds with mountains of good deeds so the Prophet ﷺ says he comes with mountains of good deeds and in the dunya in the world he in reality had you know may had hurt some individual, may had said something bad to a person. And this is what the main goal of today's speech is, is that the hukuk, the rights that we have upon each other, it is very, very important that we carry those rights, that we take heed and we carry those rights and we take care of those rights upon one another. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that many a times it happens that a person may just say something to an individual. He may say something to a person. And that because of his statement, because of what he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, he totally breaks that heart, the heart of that individual. He shatters the heart of that person. That is more severe in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is more greater in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the destruction of the Kaaba. So can we imagine that? That how much value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in, in His eyes uh, for a person who holds Iman, who has Iman. And this brotherhood that Allah has given us, we need to value that. We need to understand the rights we have upon one another. One right that is upon one another in Surah Al-Hujrat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O you people who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن That is, stay away from a lot of assumptions, you know. And at times, uh, many of us may assume wrong things about one another. And this is something, you know, that we should stay away from. Assumptions is what? What, what is assumptions? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what do assumptions lead to, right? Many a times, whatever assumptions are, may not even be true, right? And we're just sitting down assuming that, oh, this person does this. Oh, you know, this individual, he is, you know, involved in, in gambling. This individual, he's involved in, you know, drinking. This person is involved in this haram and that haram. We're just assuming. Total assumptions. It's not even 100% right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that stay away from assumptions. Why? Because what happens is when you start to assume, what happens? Then the next step is you go ahead and you try to spy. And that's what Allah Ta'ala says. The next step is what? To prove that your assumption is right, what are you going to do? You're going to start spying on that person's life. Hey, what is he doing in you know secret? Who is he meeting? What is this person doing with his life? You know, in free time, what is this person involved in? La Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La Don't spy. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now when you are done spying on that person's life, and you figured out what he is doing, what happens next? وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the next step is what? That you start to do ghiba. You start to backbite. You start to say, man, this person is doing like this, and he's doing like that. You know, this person is involved in this haram and that haram. And many a times what happens is when we are backbiting, you know, a lot of times we hear this statement that, brother, whatever I'm saying is true. You know, you're backbiting, you're sitting down with your friend and you're saying, oh, brother, whatever I'm saying is true. The Prophet ﷺ said that is the very definition of backbiting. ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَى Right? You talking something about a person, you mentioning something about, for example, Abdullah or Abdul Rahman, something that he doesn't like. This is what the true definition of backbiting is. So now you just sit down and you chit chat. And the Prophet ﷺ said, now if you had said this, if you had said whatever, you're, you know, the statements that you're claiming upon that individual, if it's not right, if it's not true, then it's even a greater sin. Then it's slandering. It's buhtan. You're accusing him something for he's something he's never even done in his life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now don't do ghiba. Now this is what, these are the rights of one another upon us. That how do we live in a society? How do we live as Muslims? How should this brotherhood be developed? How should this brotherhood be developed amongst us? Is it in, in, through this way? And what happens when you do ghiba? The Prophet says when a person does ghiba, all of his actions, all of his a'malu salihah, his good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes them away. And who gets it? The person who he's backbiting about. That's why Imam Abu Hanifa used to say, he used to say, you know, if I was to ever backbite anybody, he used to say, if I were, if I were to ever backbite anybody, I would backbite my mom. He'd say, I would backbite my mother. Why? Because I'm giving her my hasanat. I'm giving her my good deeds. Why? It's an individual you don't even like, you don't even care about. You hate to even look at him. And then you sit down, you backbite, and you're giving them all your hard work, good deeds. Right? All of those adhkar and all of those, you know, Quran and salahs and all of it's all going to him. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ says on the day of Qiyamah when he comes, he comes with mountains of good deeds. And then what happens? The Prophet ﷺ says what? Now in dunya he cursed this person out. You know, he may took the wealth of that individual. He, you know, bothered this person. Prophet ﷺ says Allah Ta'ala gives his hasanat to those people. There's a line of people. Allah Ta'ala takes his good deeds, mountains of good deeds, and he starts to give those people. To a, to a, to a point where the Prophet ﷺ says, there's a line of people. And there comes a time, there's a, comes a, there's a, comes a moment where his hasanat are done. Nothing left. Nothing left in his bank account. But there's still a line of people. There's still a number of people waiting. Ya Allah, He did this to me in the dunya. Ya Allah, He did this to me. Ya Allah, He hurt me. Ya Allah, He did this. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah Ta'ala, to you know, punish him. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala takes the evil deeds of those people now. The line of people that is waiting, Allah Ta'ala Ta takes their evil deeds. And Allah Ta'ala puts it upon him. Allah Ta'ala puts it upon him. Now that, all of those evil deeds and evil sins, they are being put upon his, in his bank account. To an extent where the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, the list is done now, the people are done. He's left with mountains of evil deeds. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala commands the Malaika to drag him on his face and throw him into Jahannam. This is what a true Muflis is, the Prophet ﷺ says. So what happens, how does a person get there? Is when you, cannot, when you are not able to take care of your hasanat, you're not able to take care of your good deeds. And you're not able to protect that relationship you have with your friends and you have with your brothers, you have with your, you know, in the, this, this, this brotherhood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, when you're not able to protect that relationship, this is how a person becomes bankrupt. Before I conclude, there's a very beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's a long hadith. Um, and this actually shows us as to how we should keep our relationship towards one another. How we should keep our heart pure towards one another. And what is the reward for a person who does so. So Anas radiallahu anhu says, he says in the hadith, Kunna julusan inda Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says there was uh, a time where we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once. And ithtala alina rajulun, a, a man, he entered on the get in, in that gathering. And he was walking by that gathering. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at this person 
And the Prophet وسلم, before he even came, the Prophet وسلم, said, يَطَّلِعُ عَلَيْنَا رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ A man will come upon you, he is going to walk by here, and he is from the people of Jannah. What did he say? يَطَّلِعُ عَلَيْكُمْ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ He's going to come upon you, he's going to walk by here, and he's from the people of Jannah. So the Sahaba are sitting down, and they're looking, they're waiting. So a man walks by. The Hadith says, that man had made wudu, fresh wudu, and the water of wudu was dripping from his beard. And he had his shoes in his left hand. He was holding his shoes in his left hand, and he was walking by. So... The Sahaba, they see this, this is subhanAllah, this person is from the people of Jannah. That, that individual, he's totally unaware. He doesn't know what's going on. This happens the first day. The second day, same scenario, same situation. The Prophet ﷺ, before he even comes, he says, عَلَيْكُمْ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ Second day. Again, a man is going to come and he's going to be from the people of Jannah. Sahaba are sitting, they're looking. This man again, from the people of Jannah. Same, same person, same individual. Three days in a row this happened. The third day again the Prophet ﷺ said, يَطَّلِعُ عَلَيْكُمْ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ Three times in a row. So now in that gathering in the Sahaba, amongst the Sahaba, there was a Sahabi with the name of Amr ibn al-As radiallahu an. So Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he's thinking to himself, he's like, man, three days in a row, and I need to find out what he's doing. You know, he's given the glad tidings of Jannah three times in a row. I have to find out what he's doing. I have to find out. And this was the zeal, the desire that the Sahaba had inside of them, right? That, that, that pushed them to learn, to, 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 to figure out what, how can I attain the Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I get Allah's paradise? How can I get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If it was somebody like us, oh yes, he's three times in a row, Jannah, mashallah, I'm also amongst them, right? So now, he's like, I have to figure it out. So he goes to him and he says, Brother, I want to accompany you. I had a little dispute and an argument with my father. And, you know, I don't want to stay home. So I want to accompany you. I want to stay with you for, for some days if you allow me, please. So he says, Yes, come. Come with me. Now his, Amr ibn al-Asr his intention is what? So I can see what amal he's doing due to which the Prophet of Allah guaranteed him Jannah three times. So I can also do this action. So he says, Yes, come with me. The first day they go home, so Amr ibn al-Asr radiallahu anhu, the narration it comes, he says that the first day, you know, whatever he did, I did the same exact thing. He prayed his salah, I prayed my salah. You know, I thought he was maybe going to stand up after Isha till Fajr, he's going to pray. But after Isha, man, he took his blanket and there starts his snoring. Allahu Akbar, he's snoring the whole night he's sleeping. And except that he says in the hadith that, you know what, maybe when he would turn around, in his, in his, when he would wake up in his, from his sleep a little bit in the night, he would just remember Allah, he just say, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, just do tasbih of Allah. That's it, that's all he did the whole night. He didn't do anything else. He says, yes, one, the first day I'm shook, man, what is this guy doing? Second day, again, same situation, you know, Fajr to Aisha, same exact routine. After Aisha, he's not doing anything, he just takes the blanket and gone. The man is out, lights out. Knocked out. What is going on? This happens three times, three days in a row. So Amr ibn al is like, man, that's it. He probably does this every day. So I don't really know what he's doing. I have to ask him now. So he comes up to this man and he says, brother, you know, the only reason why I came and I sat with you and I, you know, I asked you for permission to stay with you, to live with you, it wasn't, I did not have any argument with my father or, or, or any of that. It's just that I wanted to see what you actually do. Because the Prophet ﷺ, we were sitting with him three days in a row and he said, you are from the people of Jannah. So what do you do? He says, uh, I do whatever you see me doing. I don't do anything extra. Whatever you see me doing is what I do. That's it. I don't do anything extra. So Amr ibn al-Asr in the narration says, Amr ibn al-Asr he lost all hope. So he says, yes, that's all you do, man. You can't really tell me anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing extra you do. You know, maybe something here and there says, no, nothing. So Amr ibn Asr turns around and he walks away. When he, while he's walking away, he says, you know, come. There may be something that I do. I'm not sure maybe if it's because of that or not. That Allah has guaranteed me, the Prophet ﷺ has guaranteed me Jannah. But it may be, it may not be, I'm not sure. What is that thing? The thing is, before I go to bed, I keep my heart clean from everyone. Every single person that I know, I keep my heart clean from them. My heart is clean. It has no hatred, no hasad, no jealousy, no bughd. 
no enmity, no animosity towards anyone. He says maybe it might be because of this. So Umar ibn Asr who says, when he heard this in the narration, you know when you figure something out, and you jump and you're like, yes, that is it. Hada huwa. In the narration he says, Hada huwa. Meaning, Hada huwa. Like, this is it. This is, this is what you were doing. You to which the Prophet of Allah guaranteed you Jannah three times in a row. And then what did he say? Wa inna la nutiqu ala hadha. Wa inna la nutiqu ala hadha. Amr ibn Asrana says, yes, you are doing it, but we are not able to do something like that. Inna la nutiqu ala. We are not capable of doing things like that. It is very, very difficult to keep your heart clean towards every single person. Right? In lip service is easy. You may say, I don't like, yes, I love this brother for the sake of Allah. But to truly keep your heart clean from everybody, that there is no animosity, there is no hatred, there is no bughul, there is no enmity towards anybody, that is very difficult to do. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and I. That this brotherhood that we have, we keep it sincere and that we don't have anything towards one another inside our hearts. May Allah give me all of us the ability to do this inshallah. That we keep our hearts clean towards everyone and that when we retire to bed, we forgive each and every single person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.